Welcome to another edition of the Recruiting Scoop, brought to you by Red Raider Outfitter, the fans' favorite since 1975. I'm Jared Johnson, and man, today is uh, one of my favorite days of the year. It's uh, what we like to call early Christmas. It's the early signing period, which has become, uh, for football, the de facto you know signing day uh, of the recruiting cycle. And man, this is the best recruiting class that Texas Tech has signed in the decade I've been here. It's a top 25 class. Uh, nationally, according to 24-7 Sports, and fourth in the Big 12 behind Texas, Oklahoma, and Big 12 champ TCU. So, uh, Joey McGuire, uh, his director of player personnel, James Blanchard, several other guys um, involved, and all of the assistant coaches who did the legwork as well. Um, they just, I mean, my hat's off to all of them. Uh, I mean, even the, the media department with all the graphics, everything that they've done, I mean, all the things that went into uh, Texas Tech signing this, this top 25 class, this great class, um, just I'm really impressed with and my hats off and my respect goes out to them uh, because I have at least an inkling uh, given what I do and talking with the recruits and everything and talking with honestly the staff uh, throughout the the process just the inkling that I have of, of the effort it took uh, and the skill to pull it off it's just very impressive Texas Tech signed 24 recruits on Wednesday uh, again what's become that you know national signing day for all intents and purposes it's just kind of overview on it. It's been billed as the uh, fastest class in the country and the, the fastest class in Texas Tech history. In terms of it being the fastest class in the country, I mean, there are some facts, uh, certifiable truths in regards to backing that statement up, namely being that uh, many, as many as 10 signees who posted some kind of nationally uh, relevant time on the track um, and some really impressive uh, times, whether it be in the 100, in the hurdles, uh, uh, various uh, sprint events. It's uh, a very fast group, but these are a bunch of track guys who can't play football. It's a bunch of football players who could really run, and that's the most impressive part to me. And it's not just DBs, though. You have some really certified burners at DB. Like, I think Jordan Sanford is going to play a four-star. He's rated as a four-star safety at a Mansfield Timberview, and Coach McGuire confirmed and Sanford told me, too, that uh, he's going to play corner at Tech. I mean, that guy can just flat out run. Um, uh, Justin Horn and Mike Dingle, two inside linebackers, could really run. They're, uh, they've posted top ten national uh, hurdle times. Uh, there's, like, state champs uh, in their events on the track. So, But they can run, and they'll come up and hit you. They're uh, prolific in terms of, like, as tacklers as well, and their stats uh, in their high school. So another overview I want to mention is the numbers of offensive line. You signed uh, four scholarship offensive linemen plus a, a walk-on, uh, and then defensive line, four defensive linemen, and that's not even counting – uh, outside linebacker edge rushes in Isaiah Crawford and Dylan Spencer. So uh, you really bolstered uh, your numbers and your uh, skill level, your talent in the trenches as well. And we all know how important that is. But then uh, I posted on, on Twitter, Tech signed 15 of the top 125 recruits in Texas. And that's got to be up there with the best all time. In mean, 2011, I uh, had really good numbers too. It was a top 20 class under Tuberville, um, but uh, 10 top 100, Texas top 100, 15 Texas top 100. Then you have Justin Horn, who's, uh, I believe he's number 33 in Louisiana, which is great, a lot of talent in Louisiana. And then uh, Mike Dingle, who I mentioned, these guys are the, the track guys. They're, I believe he was 22nd in South Carolina, where there's also a good amount of talent. So um, just overall, great class, and it's spread out. I mean, I love Jake Strong, the quarterback. I think he's a perfect fit for Kitley's system. Dual threat guy, 6'2", 200. I, I wonder if he's a little bit taller than 6'2". We had him on the Rock and Pregame radio show, uh, also sponsored by a Riveter Outfitter, by the way. Uh, and he was, I'm 6'4", and he was he was in boots, I'll say that, but he, you know, he was almost as tall as me, and he's wider than I was expecting. So he's, he's a big dude. He's bigger than the 6'2", 200 he's listed at, in my opinion. And I think running back's interesting. Anquan Willis, uh, 6'2", 200, runs with a lot of power. He's got some speed. He's uh, really like a one-cut one kind of guy. Uh, I really like him, but he can play on, on the edge. And Coach McGuire said that, look, he's coming in as running back, uh, along with Jamari Davis, the other running back uh, coming in. But uh, who could play safety? Both these guys might end up at other positions, but they're, they're starting off at running back. He mentioned this is really like a thunder and lightning kind of thing where Davis, and 
don't get me wrong, Willis can, is explosive, but Dave, Jamar Davis uh, from Clarendon out here in West Texas is a truly explosive runner, so it'll be fun to see how what he does at running back. But if that doesn't work out and they need him at safety or he's just a better fit at safety, they can move him there, and he was very good at that position as well. Uh, a lot of height, uh, 6'3", DJ Crest. Um, signed out of El Paso, Kelby Valson, who's just now, and I know this is something you've heard a lot about him, but uh, he's at Arlington Bowie. Hadn't played football for a long time, but 6'2", 185, uh, showed a lot of athletic ability. I think uh, that guy can end up being a star one, one day. And then TJ West, really fast, 6'1", 190. Uh, he's not as tall, but he reminds me a lot of Trey Cleveland in that, uh, you know, the he's got that high top end speed. He's got... Uh, He's really good at high pointing the ball. He can do a lot of things for you. Good hands. I, I like him. I already mentioned the offensive line. Uh, Macho Stevenson, who Oklahoma State made a, a big push for uh, late. Uh, he signed with Texas Tech. That's great. He's listed as an athlete, but he's going to play inside there, uh, inside linebacker with those other B studs. Uh, I mentioned Justin Horn and uh, Mike Dingle. Uh, and then Marcus Ramon Edwards, he's listed as 6'3", 195. He goes to, uh, you know, he's basically, he's, he's goes to Trinity Christian here in, in Lubbock. So the competition isn't great, okay? But he dominates. He dominates in every sport he participates in. And I like how Coach McGuire said he, he's continuing to grow. John Curry's another linebacker who I think is one of those guys, he's like the least heralded guy in the class, but you watch his tape and you're like, this guy can play football. And, uh, you know, his parents were athletes and, uh, you know, He's another guy Coach mentioned continues to grow, and he might be the type of dude who play, like becomes a household name but wasn't very valued in terms of through the recruiting process. Uh, Brennan Jordan is a come-up-and-hit-you, thumper kind of safety. Coach said uh, he'll probably play at star there. Uh, they also brought in, I mentioned, C.J. Baskerville, uh, the transfer from San Diego State. He's from Texas. Uh, he's going to play star too, so th that's going to be the, that's the plan to replace Muddy, which is going to be a, t a tall task. Muddy Waters had a great season at star for Texas Tech, and then Quincy Ledet's helping out some uh, uh, depth there at defensive tackle. Somebody who's played a lot of football coming from Louisiana Monroe. So those that's really uh, most Anthony White is somebody to mention, and Miles Thompson. Anthony White's a local kid who had, he was a high three star recruit who had a lot of offers and then got hurt towards ACL playing uh, basketball back in. The previous February, uh, so Ted got him as a preferred walk-on. That's a huge addition. He can play receiver or DB and be very good. Miles Thompson's a very fast DB out of Iowa. I don't know a lot about him other than those two things. So, but uh, you're getting him as a preferred walk-on. So that's really the gist of the class, which is really impressive. Um, I think they might sign. Uh, they'll add at least one, if not two, offensive linemen through the transfer portal. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, maybe one more, Coach McGuire said, uh, in terms of high school in February. But this is the bulk of your class. Uh, it's a lot of players. It's a lot of talent. It's a lot of speed, a lot of size. Uh, it's spread out all over at every position. I mean, I would take this recruiting class every single cycle. If they can duplicate this, I would take it every cycle. And you'd be a top 25 program uh, and contend in the Big 12. So uh, it's, really ex it's a really exciting day. Uh, for Texas Tech, so great news for Red Raider fans out there and uh, just all of Raiderland. Uh, but for now, I want to thank you for watching, and until next time.